Hello and welcome to the Synthetic Podcast. I am your host, Synthetic. What's going on, sissies? How's everybody been? We are on episode 47, and I want to give a little heads up. Um, The updates and the listener email is some pretty spicy stuff, and I know that's what everybody likes to hear. That's probably why you're listening to the podcast. Um, And after that, it's a very... I don't want to say very, but it's a fairly technical episode about creating your own podcast. So I highly recommend to stick around after the updates and um, a listener email. And uh, if you are curious about why I kind of set up my podcast, why I do it, and how I go about doing it, and you can listen to some of these steps to see if you want to create your own, stick around. If not, I I totally get it if you want to uh, unplug after all the kinky shit I'm about to talk about. So I wasn't paying attention, but my one-year podcast anniversary officially was April 9th. Um, that was just for the intro, and then April 11th, I had episode one. Just like that, a whole year went by doing this podcast in one year 47 episodes and uh that's actually why i wanted to have this particular episode be about how to create your own podcast um i i had this i think this one was originally set to be episode 52 but because it was so close to the uh anniversary date i was like you know what fuck it let's kind of let's kind of get in the mood with it all so I, and because I do these every other weekend, or I post them every other weekend, I should say, I really was I would have been under the crunch to uh, have it be have it come out like April 9th or 11th. I just couldn't have, I I probably couldn't have done it unless I was working on it all week. With the amount of shit that I go through, I have four pages of small font dense notes on all the different aspects of the podcast from beginning to end and my particular experience with everything so thank you for sticking around some of you i uh i don't know how i fare in the way of other cross-dressing podcasts or other trans slash cross-dressing non-binary podcast male to female whatever the fuck sissy this sissy that but um it's only going to get better as time goes on. And I, what was it? I think it was last week. I um, I was on my fucking iTunes podcast app. Because I, I deleted everybody that I follow except for myself. And the reason being was, and I didn't know this, but with the iPhone podcast app, it stores everything on your fucking phone. All the episodes of everybody. So it was gigs and gigs and gigs of just fucking audio files. And even if I would delete all the different um, completed episodes, it seemed like it still saved everything. And then after I deleted everybody except for myself, because I wanted to make sure that, you know, I, I consistently check my shit after I post it and make sure that there's really no interruptions or there's no squealing or squeaking or whatever the fuck have you. But um, ever since I started listening to the uh, whatever Joe Rogan's on now, I, I just put everything over there. You have to actually be online and download it from their server or whatever the fuck. So that just works out better for me. And with all the with all the songs that I have on my phone, I'm I'm almost at eight thousand songs. Uh, it takes up a lot of space, and um, also because I record pictures or uh, record videos nearly every weekend. And take pictures and whatnot. I found myself running out of space several months ago. I just couldn't hold any more uh, data, and I was like, "This, this is not good." Drinking water for once. It's three fifty-seven in the morning. It's super quiet outside. It's cold as fuck. It is currently uh, the seventeenth. And uh, it is nice and cozy. It's been an awesome weekend. I uh, I don't know. I kind of had an opportunity today to talk to my mom about some of the stuff that I uh, that I do on the weekends. Not to be like uh, gross or perverted with her or whatever, but um, her husband wound up in the hospital again. So she is always more than happy to have 
uh, time to herself. I went over there today, and I, I was kind of like, should I just fucking bring it up to get it over with? And you know, obviously, besides that, it would be really good content for the pod. You know what I mean? Um, I didn't though. Again, I just, I think I talked this about this on three separate occasions, when I was just like, eh, you know, fucking, I, I might say something to her. I don't know. And then on the other hand, I was just like, fuck, if I go over there, I can't just spill the beans and fucking, like, leave right away. And I wouldn't leave out of fear. It just, at least for me, I, and maybe I just, it's not, okay, it's not a patience thing. It's, uh, I need to make sure that I want to fucking sit over there for uh, a couple hours to talk about it. Because I know she's going to have questions. And honestly, I still don't know what her reaction is going to be. Um... Other than a few people in my life, nobody knows that I get laser hair treatments, laser hair removal treatments. Nobody, nobody fucking knows except for a couple family members. Well, several family members and a few friends that I've had a Brazilian butt lift. I was able to go under the radar for all that stuff. And uh, actually, the 21st, which is going to be next Thursday, I believe, I have the uh, appointment after a whole year of uh, since my last butt lift or whatever. So. Or, I think it's longer than that, actually. But anyways, we're going to see what's going to be going on with the next procedure and when I'm going to schedule it out and how I'm going to finance it. Basically, I'm going to put it all on my uh, credit card that has the lowest APR. And the weird thing, and I, I think I talked about this before. I know I know I've mentioned it to several, several of my friends, but... One of the reasons I got... I'll, I'll get into the spicy updates in a second, but I, I'm talking about it, so I just want to finish the thought. Otherwise, it's going to drive me nuts. But with my... Or with your credit cards, occasionally you can call them, and sometimes they have promos for new APRs and other things, and sometimes they don't. And sometimes that includes, like, APRs and balance transfers and um, increasing your credit line and all that, your credit limit. Um, if you just ask for help and especially if you give them precise reasons why very few times have i been denied but with all the credit cards that i've ever had at one point or another at least once i've been approved to get an increased credit line and or a lower apr and you just have to fucking talk to people but i think it was my discover credit card and i, th I found this to be really weird because nobody ever said this to me before but she was super cool it was like a nice conversation that I had with somebody on the phone. And I told her exactly what I was planning to do with it. And she was very open-minded. She's like, oh, okay. But she wanted to know initially, because I was asking, I was like, hey, can I get a lower APR? And can you also increase my credit limit? Because I'm going to be uh, making a large pur purchase probably next year or so. And I just kind of wanted to just deal with all that now so I don't have to worry about it then. And she's like, well, what did you want to get it for? And I told her. And she's like, oh, okay. She's like, well, I'll tell you what. When it gets closer to that time and you kind of have an idea of what you're going to be, uh, how much you're going to be spending, do it about a week or so before so we can kind of get everything figured out and, you know, we'll just go from there. And I think my APR on that card is like 11.65, something like that. It's fairly low for a fucking credit card. I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie to you. With all the bullshit that they're tossing people in the mail nowadays, I'm sure it's like 29.99% interest or whatever, but... Like I said, you gotta you gotta spend money. You gotta pay that shit off right away. I spend every other paycheck just throwing it on a credit card. Not the whole thing, but most of it, like eighty five percent of it, and the rest goes to rent and you know obviously paying my phone and and the, you know all my uh, all the shit that I've been spending on. I've been spending a lot of money on all my been buying fucking sex toys. I ruined one sex sleeve in the uh, in the middle of one of my last videos, so I had to get a new one. But uh, the good thing about that is that the last one I had was like a, a rose color, kind of like a light pink almost. And it, it was transparent, but not that transparent. But the one I just bought from adamandeve.com, I think it's just adamandeve.com, it's a completely clear one. And, you know, actually because I've been having conversations with people on my OnlyFans, with, because I make uh, OnlyFans content, um, some of... Some of the people that I was having conversations with, I think like two or three of them, were requesting that I make more videos with that. Because ever since I introduced that into my videos, people have really been loving it. And honestly, I've been loved doing it because, uh, especially if you get 
like I, I record on my phone. So if I get it like super up close to, you know, me jerking off with the cock sleeve or the uh, pocket pussy, whatever you want to call it. Pocket pussy, I think, is more of a brand name than anything else. But anyways, um, the sounds, the, what is it, ASMR? You get that kind of stuff. And especially when you start talking dirty to people, uh, they seem to be big fans of it. So, um, what the fuck was I talking about? I went off topic. But anyways, um, so let's just go into the updates here. Uh, one year anniversary. And uh, I'm still going strong. I... I haven't really slowed down on getting ahead so much necessarily. So we are at episode 47. I have everything plotted out to episode 56. And if you want a little update on what I'm going to be talking about, episode 48 I'm going to have with my buddy Mark. And we were originally going to do the top 10 movies. And I eventually made a whole uh, an entire list of my favorite 200 movies top 200 and once i really started going i started to run out of space quick because i'm like fucking what about this what about this and what about that um there's a very strong theme in my list if you uh stay tuned for that and whenever that gets um recorded and dropped which is going to be basically two weekends from now um so i was excited to do that just do, just working on one movie, though, to kind of give details when we're talking about it, took an entire page of, uh, I think, 8-point font. Um, I, I mean, it's not hard work for me. It's just uh, when you're trying to be precise about things and you you try to have uh, prevent dead air, it helps out a lot to have, um, I don't know, detailed show notes, I guess you could say. And even though uh, my the top favorite, five that i'm going to uh talk about because i i think we're gonna have to narrow it down to five uh i can talk about them at length but i i wanted to have some sort of professionalism when i'm when i'm talking about that and a discussion with somebody else so we could have a good back and forth with everything after that uh episode 49 i'm going to be talking about depression episode 50 i'm going to talk about living alone and why i prefer it episode 51 i'm going to be talking about um loving life not my love life but where i'm at in terms of being excited about everything because i i love going to work i love going to the gym i love my friends i love uh my family members the ones that i hang out with i love jerking off and making only fans content and taking naughty pictures on the weekend uh most of the things that i eat i'm ready to lose my mind because it tastes so good and that includes obviously my energy drinks i you know how many episodes you've been hearing me slurp on those fucking things um episode 52 i'm going to be talking about flushing out your alter ego i thought that was kind of a fun way to put it but if you're if you're kind of non-binary or uh a cross-dresser or a cross-dresser kind of going into trans because the more i explore cross-dressers on on any of the different porn sites or social medias i can't tell you how many of them you see their before and after pictures or like uh you would see their very early photos before they, they became like a top performer you're just like holy shit like no way so it, it seems to be one of the first steps that even if you're maybe trans you kind of have to take as a cross-dresser at some point and especially if you do it in secret because you're kind of surrounded by people that aren't so accepting of you or whatever. But I'm going to be talking about how I felt about everything with uh, why I chose the name I did, Synthetic. Two words, S-Y-N-T-H, you know. Um, why I have the look the way that I do. Like, that be, you know, the, the makeup, the way that I dress. It's all natural for me. It wasn't anything that I necessarily had to plot out, you know what I mean? Um, I'm going to be talking, I'll go in detail w with everything. Cause some people that I talk to, they seem to be still on They're They're not sure what to call them. Feminine. So them, their feminine selves. So like a name or, um, even coming to terms with if they're a bisexual or not. Cause I, I think it's safe to say anybody listening to this podcast or any others that has to do with, uh, cross-dressing or trans or whatever, you're probably pretty open sexually, especially if 
you know, you have somebody talking about cross-dressing and jerking off in, in public and making, you know, naughty, naughty videos. So, um, and after that, I was going to do the, um, how to create your own podcast. So I actually, no, that would be, uh, let's see here, 50, so I'll have 55 episodes, not 56. Um, inspirations, I have, what is that, the fourth installment of Inspirations. This one's going to be a little bit different. This one's going to revolve around people that I got a lot out of, especially when you hear their whole life story. I was like, dude, what in the fuck? No way. And it's it's all inspirational stuff. It's all cool stuff. And, I mean, obviously you got the good and the bad when you hear about somebody's life story and whatnot. But anyways, um, episode 55, I thought this would be fun, like a really fun video to do with my buddy Mark. He's the one I watch videos with all the time. Uh, not porn videos, just mostly 80s films and whatnot. But um, I thought it would be fun because we were talking about it almost the entire night. I was uh, watching a video of just movies at his house. We were watching, we were watching the first Conan, and there's this uh, there's this chick that he eventually has as like his girlfriend, and I think she becomes his wife, but she eventually dies, and she goes to like Valhalla or something like that, and she becomes a Valkyrie, and she like uh, she had his back the entire time, and then even in death. When he needs to get saved, she comes down from Valhalla as a full Valkyrie in like this shiny chrome armor, and uh, it was like awesome because like it was uh, it's it, it it's not really a movie that you think of that has like uh, love scenes necessarily, but um, I made a comment of like that's a true ride or die bitch, and since then we've seen several different movies. To where we we would both say mostly me that's like she's like a ride or die bitch, um, just it's something that I appreciate in movies. I, I there's so many so many movies you watch the female character and again it's scripted I understand that, but it's the females like they're just like oh fucking scream like a maniac or just or whine and cry or keep screaming uncontrollably and it's not fun to watch and it's definitely not fun to listen to, but occasionally. Uh, and especially in some of the movies that I'm going to be talking about in my top five, you come across a female character that doesn't whine, doesn't complain. And, uh, I mean, these particular movies are what they are. So, you know, with the guy that she chooses to, you know, because he's like the hero and she's like, I wouldn't say uh, any of these movies are necessarily the prize, but they were just, they were just a badass chick. They were a ride or die bitch. She was always by his side doing whatever um if it's not that that might also either turn into or become a part of uh another thing i wanted to do with mark is talk about awesome b-rated movies because we both have a, a strong love for uh linnea quigley which is uh, an 80 scream queen and i talked about her at least once and we watched several movies of hers to where she was like a leading character and then we also went down a rabbit hole of other 80s horror movies and then just other 80s movies that were B-rated. And we were just like, sometimes we were dying laughing and it was all good stuff. So I don't know if I'm going to combine those at some point. But at this point, that's what I have down for episode 55, which should be episode 54. Because like I said, I I uh, have duplicates here. And episode 56, um, I was going to talk about... Uh, all cross-dressing and trans movies, so whether that's uh, anything good or bad, and just kind of give my take on maybe how they're received after they were made. Uh, so, like, thanks, uh, Julie Newmar, or uh, that Tu Wong Fu, or whatever the fuck. Uh, I was going to talk about that, and just, just a whole bunch of other movies, and I'm even just going to go search out for some. And, and if the list is that limiting... Um, I'll probably just talk about trans characters or uh, maybe smaller roles of characters in cross-dressing. There's, there's a few that I can kind of think off the top of my head while I'm talking or whatever, but I'm not going to mention them because I, I want to save these movies for uh, some of the B-rated stuff because uh, there are, in fact, some B-rated movies that have cross-dressing and or trans in them. So, But anyways, all right, let's move on to the next thing. I have... Uh, been working on my audiobooks. I've been listening to the uh, 
Philip K. Dick. I think it's volume five. It's a total of like 18 hours and 25 minutes. It's all sci-fi. Uh, if you if you know what Total Recall is, it's uh, it's by a short uh, short short story by Philip K. Dick. And um, what was it? We can the name of the book was We Can Remember It for You Wholesale. And if you've ever seen Total Recall. Uh, you know, you know what I'm talking about, but it, uh, almost all of his, actually, I think, yeah, damn near all of his books take place in the future and it's, they're, they're just insane. Every single, uh, short story I've been listening to, cause they're, they're, they've all been about 45 minutes to 55 minutes long. They're all fucking crazy. I'm listening to these, to these books and I am just like, What? How do you even think to write something like this? Um, been having a good time. So with that, with the podcast that I listen to, me thinking about my own podcast and then me listening to different songs to kind of, you know, think about what I'm going to do for the weekends. I have been just, it's Monday through Friday, I am fucking packed with entertainment. And that doesn't even include YouTube that I watch before I go into work. Because generally what I do is I, I wake up, have my energy drink, start looking at emails, looking at all my notifications for everything, pop on uh, YouTube, and I start working. Uh, while I'm waking up, I, I'm watching or listening and or listening to YouTube videos while I'm working on the podcast or trying to figure out details for the next video that I'm working on. Then I usually go to the gym, come back home, uh, meal prep, clean up a little bit if I have to, then go to work. So... I've been having tons of fun with that. Um, next up, I have been somewhat controlling my energy drink consumption. I am roughly, roughly, around 50, around 500 milligrams of caffeine per day. For, uh, with the exception of the last two weeks, I've been closer to 600. It's been like 580, something like that, and change. But before that, I was consuming around 1,000 milligrams every day of energy drinks, which is not only expensive, but uh, I was having some serious heart palpitations. And also because, uh, you know, with the uh, procedure, the second Brazilian butt lift, even with the first one, they were like, you know, try to limit your caffeine intake so it doesn't affect, um, you know, going under with the... Uh, what to call it? The sleepy stuff. But um, yeah, so I've been trying to work on that. I, I definitely know I'll save a few dollars, but uh, there's been uh, multiple, multiple times to where I had heart palpitations and I kind of sat up and I was like, should I go to the hospital? And uh, you would think that would be enough for somebody to be like, you know what? I'm really going to try to slow down on these, but uh I'm chemically addicted to energy drinks. So I'm it's something I'm working on. Anesthesia was the word I was looking for, by the way. <laughs> it's it's weird when you when you can read and just think to yourself or listen listen to something and think to yourself, it's one thing. But when you're trying to talk and fill up fill up air, fill up space, and then trying to like think of stuff while you're reading it uh it's it's kind of tricky sometimes because the simple things that are usually just come right out of your mouth they're not on the tip of your tongue anymore you have to kind of reach in there the next thing and this is where we get into some of the spicy stuff so roughly and this is most weekends now uh just to give you information about my weekends but with the weekends you know I spend all week trying to nail down music that I'm going to use for my uh, one of my OnlyFans videos, which is, you know, me cross-dressing, dressed up, fucking something, getting fucked, or jerking off all over myself. But I spend all week thinking about what I'm going to wear, uh, things I might do, say, toys I might use. The music is the biggest thing, though. The music and, you know, I only have two rooms to kind of really film in. The bathroom is too small. And the kitchen really isn't that big, you know. Even though I've done stuff in my kitchen, but uh, by the time the weekend comes, I I have usually been maintaining throughout the week with my shaving. But I do all my final prepping around Saturday evening, 
and I try to get all my stuff out of the way early in, earlier in the Saturday. So if I wake up around like 11.45 noon, you know, I, I have my energy drink. I go off to the gym if I need to do run any errands. And if I'm going to hang out with anybody, I do it then. And I give everybody a time. Like I can hang out for an hour and a half, two hours, and then I fucking have to go. So like uh, last weekend, I hung out with my buddy Brian. Actually, the last two weekends, hung out with my buddy Brian. And I we've been watching Rick and Morty. So we get snacks from the gas station. I have an energy drink. We watch Rick and Morty while we eat our snacks. And then I've been taken off. But all the weekends before then, for well, not for the past few months, because I've been so busy with the podcast and making content and stuff like that. There was a there was a stretch there to where people were um, ordering custom videos and whatnot, and that uh, was fun and also lucrative. So no complaints with that. But before that, we were hanging out five to eight hours uh, every Saturday, and then sometimes even in, in addition to the Sunday that would come, just because uh, I was having lots of fun. But now I have other stuff that I'm working on, like you know doing what I'm doing now, talking to you all, and uh, jerking off like a goddamn pervert. But anyways getting off track so on the weekends as i'm prepping as i'm cleaning myself and i'm shaving and everything i i start to put everything that i'm going to wear at the foot of my bed so whether it's uh you know a sweater dress with you know some hoop earrings or uh stockings or a garter belt or my heels or uh panties they're usually uh crotchless or uh, I also started buying jock straps but all those items I have at the foot of my bed or at least as much as I can fit so almost like uh almost like my call of duty loadout I have all my uh I have all my attachments there you know what I mean and uh well after I set all that stuff up I usually start to shave so I start from head to toe I I do my head first then I do my face neck chest, hands, lower arms, upper arms, uh, abdomen, and then feet, lower legs, upper legs, groin, ass, and I get like with the ass cheeks, and then I get way up in my crack. And even though I'm getting laser hair removal, after a whole week goes by, with the stubborn hairs that just keep staying alive, or, you know, sometimes it shifts depending on, you know, which ones that they zap, but uh, there's always some stragglers that you want to shave, and because I... I'm somewhat of a perfectionist with my stuff. I like to be really precise with everything and have everything look clean and neat. And uh, I fucking hate any kind of stubble or um, any hairs that get maybe stuck in my skin that I didn't come out with a laser treatment, but they're they're kind of in there and then they're they're too low to get with the shaver. So the skin just moving back and forth generally just has to wiggle them out that way. I, I do all that stuff. Then I do like one final deep clean with everything, go in the shower, get rid of any unwanted uh, hairs that may have been stuck to my skin, even though they were shaving off. Spray my ass, clean everything real good so I'm smelling nice. Um, and by the way, before I move on to the next thing, I want to say I, I clean my apartment every weekend in preparation for uh, making the video. So usually sometime... Uh, Friday before work, I get all my vacuuming out of the way, and then um, if if I have time with that Friday, I will also clean the bathroom and my kitchen. Just I like it smelling nice. That's just how I am. I know that probably sounds really weird for somebody that just makes you know OnlyFans videos that they you know post or whatever, but it it makes me feel good. It makes me feel clean, and it has that smash uh, smash. What the fuck? fresh hotel or um, motel kind of clean room smell to it because I use a, a little bit of bleach and the spray bottle or whatever. And it, I think it's fucking awesome. I feel a little... I know it sounds like nerdy, but I kind of feel like a little professional too or whatever. Uh, just kind of having you know all my P's and Q's kind of matched up pretty good. But around this time, <clears throat> once I'm getting everything together, I usually to kind of get myself in the mood and just just to kind of get myself horned up and tease myself a little bit i will put on some uh some form of porn actually not some form i'll usually have videos playing uh, whether they're in the background or i'm watching them uh i i'm usually going back and forth with stuff but it's usually in the form of trans porn hypno porn cross-dressing porn and all iterations of self facials or cum shots or 
um, cream pies, pulsating cocks, interracial, wh- whatever I'm in the mood for, uh, huge cock, uh, cum shot solos, all this stuff I, I like to just, it changes every week. Sometimes I watch, the, you know, sometimes I watch certain things that are just the same back to back, but most of the time it's always something different. And occasionally, and this has only happened twice since I've been making videos, but occasionally when I'm watching these videos, I am, I'm usually half hard throughout the, the whole night up to me actually getting my clothes on and then my makeup and my breast form and all that. Because uh, I don't know how, how many of you maybe have a breast form or uh, stuff that's really uh, tight around the head and neck if it's to be a shirt or uh, some sort of jacket or something like that or a pullover. But generally, you want to put your breast form on first and then whatever top you have so you don't have to fucking ruin your makeup. So that's that's one of the hard things that I have to deal with. Hard, I know, in quotes. But it, it sucks smearing your makeup to put on a breast form. And even though you're sweating, if uh, if you just put on your breast form first and then whatever top you're, you're going to wear after that so you don't have to worry about smearing anything... You can easily just put um, like folded rags underneath your breast form so that it absorbs the sweat so you don't really have anything dripping down. I usually do two in the front and then one in the back if I can kind of reach back there. It, it just sucks because while you're standing there doing your makeup and if you're like me and you uh, you like to use some sort of uh, baby powder or talc powder or whatever, whatever you, you use to put on your breast form so it doesn't fucking rip and tear, um, it goes on super – it slides right on. But the thing that sucks is, because it's a breast form, you can't sweat through the pores. All the pores are underneath the breast form. So you start to heat up slowly. And by the time I'm filming and, and doing what I'm doing, I am uh, dripping white sweat because it's I'm using baby powder from underneath my um, breast form onto my legs and my ass and my dick and the floor. Not a lot, but it's just one drip here, one drip there. And trying to maintain the proper temperature, you know, in my apartment that leads into my bathroom is a really big pain in the ass. But, um, yeah, so, you know, I do all that and then I do my makeup and then I just fucking go for it. But during this process, uh, because like, like I said, I'm going back and forth and because I, I am shaving, uh, a large, like my entire body basically, I, and I like to have the water on constantly and, you know, uh, flick the uh, razor back and forth i i kind of go through a process of like running out of hot water and it's and it sucks to do it in the shower um for one it's just more water that i'm not going to be properly utilizing and i know it sounds like a waste but uh it's it's hard to do in any one entire section with even light amounts light amounts of um shaving cream to, without having to clean your razor so i just fucking like leave it on and I, I shave as fast as i possibly can and like i said before with all the laser hair treatments and whatnot it uh it makes the process much faster but that's one of the reasons why i have to go back and forth besides you know dressing and and just trying to figure out different shit or uh or even changing the different uh videos that i maybe have on in the background while i'm working on stuff like shaving or or my makeup and whatnot but anyways with these videos sometimes i get so worked up I'm like fucking super horny and with whatever category it is, I find myself to kind of really get fixated and listen in on it. And I'm just, I'm getting, I get all fucking horned up with this, uh, last weekend I was so fucking aroused. I was watching, what was I watching? I was watching interracial porn and it was a particular it was a particular video on my ex hamster that I found. It was a compilation of um I have several compilations on like, you know, Pornhub and X Hamster and uh Hypnotube. Hypnotube is like the best one for all the sissy hypno stuff. But anyways. So I you know, sometimes when I'm watching these videos, it's not just the the sight of whatever's happening happening so if it's like a self facial video or a solo cum shot or fucking just big dicks or in this case uh interracial so just black guys just pounding on white women it's also the sound that some of these uh in this particular event that these women were making of just getting fucking destroyed 
And, you know, one of the things for me is, like, when I get fucked by my friend Jason, um, I, I'm so aroused. And it was even, like, a shock to him in the beginning of, like, how hard I like to get fucked. Because I know from the opposite end of, you know, being a guy and then fucking women, to be... To like let loose and just be unleashed and let out of the cage and just fuck super hard. That's I, what I feel like most men, and especially like most alpha men or even just straight men, I guess you could say, you just will like to fuck hard. And, you know, being on the receiving end of that, I know how it feels to take anal super fucking intensely. And I, and I fucking love it. But watching this video, I was like getting all fucking horned, you know, horned up and... Just they're getting their hair pulled, fucked from behind, and they're getting choked from being on the bottom and missionary. They're getting uh, fucking spit roasted. You know, they're getting fucked from behind and sucking on their dick, and then they're jerking two guys off, and then maybe one guy's in their pussy, one guy's in their ass, and then they're blowing some other dude. And just the sounds, and especially like if it's more than one chick, I I like it when it sounds like uh, you're almost at a sex club or some sort of a dungeon. I I like it when there's just like a lot of sex sounds. I, it's super hot to me. And when I was watching this video, and it was it was a reasonable length, I was getting fucking horned up, and I, uh, because I was filming in my bedroom, no, oh, I'm sorry, it wasn't this last video, it was the video before that, so a few weekends ago, I had taken everything off of my bed, so that includes my two pillows and my two comforters, and I put them on the couch in the living room, because I wasn't filming out there, so anything that would look messy or become a distraction automatically comes out out of the bedroom so that includes my fan that includes any notes that i have off to the side of my bed any uh cups glasses cans chapstick uh the binder with my show notes um clothes that are folded but not put away everything gets taken care of right there so by the time i'm ready to film or i start taking pictures it's everything's clean everything's straightened there's not dust on anything everything looks fucking ship shape but anyways, uh, in between, you know, going back and forth with everything and, you know, changing these videos, I, I started to play the same one that was just super hot to me. And I, I've seen a few of these uh, clips on other on other sites, and they're always in they're always like hot, super hot clips, interracial clips that just get fucking uh, shared with everybody. And even some of these things I've seen back in the day when I when Tumblr allowed porn and i was just like oh my gosh it's so fucking hot and then you know they got rid of everything and it dissipated and then sometimes you're lucky enough to find some of that stuff that gets deleted or uh, taken down by user or gets privated or whatever the fuck but this video was hitting just all my fucking buttons right and you know um i'm like I, I remember before I was getting dressed, I was still debating on whether I was going to wear uh, wear gloves or not. And I was like, should I try these on? I'm really not in the mood to wear these. And I I, I would occasionally take a peek out of my uh, the corner of my eye when I'm going through this stuff. And I, I'm watching this like interracial, this hardcore interracial compilation. And I'm like, dude, this is so fucking hot. And I, I would find myself being like m more than half aroused. And I was like, fuck. And uh, I was like, shit, man. I, I found myself not really being able to to wait to to start filming the video. And so I, I'm just lightly playing with myself, you know, just you know, tugging on my sissy stick as I'm getting everything ready. And I, I have some amount of control while I'm watching this video. But I got the idea of... I, uh, I actually... It's right next to me now that I'm talking. I bought this new comforter that's like fucking ultra soft. And um, the feeling, like one side is almost sil silky. It's not, but it, it almost feels that way. It's probably some type of nylon mix or whatever. But uh, it's super, super uh, awesome feeling. And I sleep naked, so I have that one closest to my body. But on the couch, it was kind of balled up in the way of, uh, in my living room, uh, I went out there and I, I got this idea in my head of, um, what if I just kind of straddled my two comforters out there and just 
just kind of humped him a little bit, just back and forth, just lightly, just to kind of take the edge off. While I and I was like almost done with shaving with everything, and I was about to get dressed. I had a, I had a couple more areas that I had to do, and um, I took the I took my laptop out there in the living room. I have an L-shaped couch, a very like I would say a fairly long L-shaped couch, and I put the uh, laptop on the uh, part of the L that comes out. It's like a little peninsula almost. It juts out away from the uh, main part of the couch, and just just so I could have uh, have like the noise. And I, I manipulated the shape of my comforter a little bit so that the center of it was kind of like rounded out almost. And when I was thrusting into it then, it was super sensational. It was super fucking arousing. And I was fairly close to coming even though I wasn't fully hard. I was like, I don't know, 60%. Something like that. I wasn't fully hard because I'm trying to, I'm trying to take the edge off, but I'm still kind of like, all right, I gotta fucking stop doing what I'm doing, and I, I just gotta fucking save this for the video because generally what I do, is I stop, I stop jerking off, by like Thursday or Friday, usually Thursday. So by the time Saturday comes when I'm filming, I just lose my fucking mind. I just shoot a huge load and it's super arousing and all the uh, pressure and build up for those, th for those, for those two days is extremely satisfying and overwhelming emotionally. I fucking love it. So I stopped, and I, I just left my computer out in the living room, and I, I, I did some more things, and I was like, I I remember specifically one of the other things that kept fucking with me is I kept messing with the lighting because I just wasn't happy. I couldn't figure out the, the right dimness with everything because now my whole bedroom is outfitted with all these rope lights on all four walls, and it's, depending on what color you have, because, like, red is, like, not great for lighting things up, but then obviously white is the best. So anywhere in between there, you know, you have this uh, very wide spectrum of colors to choose from. And I kept thinking about it, and then I would, I was also kind of playing my song that I was going to use for that video. And I kept fucking around more and fucking around more. And then I find myself like I'm getting exhausted and like overheating, you know, with everything. So, so now, you know, I, I take a break from fucking around with the lights and you know, putting all the clothes on the edge of my bed. And I go out to the living room again just to kind of dig my cock into my comforter. And again, I shaped it in a certain way so that, like, when I, like, dig into, thrust into it with my dick, it kind of has, like, a hole to go into. Like a very large pocket pussy, if you will. And I was like, dude, I am so fucking aroused right now. I was like, I almost don't even care about this fucking video. I could just do it tomorrow or maybe do it, do it during the week or something like that. I just didn't give a shit. I was like, no, no, I gotta stop. I gotta stop. And I, I remember, did you ever, yeah, of course you have, but you know that, that point, you know where the edge is, you know exactly how you need to stroke it if you want it to come in like 30 seconds, but if you just left it alone, you'll be fine. And I did, I, I stopped. I I was like, all right, fucking, I, I kept fucking with the lights. I'm going back and forth between the living room where my fucking, my little weird setup is. I'm going to the bedroom. You know, fucking, should I wear these giant hoop earrings? Should I not? Fucking, you know, what about these stockings? Maybe no stockings. And then if I don't have stockings, I obviously don't need a garter belt. And then I'm thinking about my color uh, situation going back and forth. And I'm getting, I'm just, I find myself nervously pacing because now I just want to come. I just want to fucking spray come. And I'm like, you know what? I got this, uh, watching these aggressive videos, because I, I watch, se I, I always watch several videos before I uh, make videos. It's not a have to have. I don't have to do that. I Most of my videos were made without watching porn um, to get off. I don't need videos to get myself there, but I like to, to, I love that buildup of me just losing my mind and I, I'm almost shaking with anticipation. Actually, I would say most times, uh, you know, most Saturdays when I'm filming, assuming I'm filming on a Saturday, which I usually do, I am usually on the verge of shaking by the time, out of anticipation, by the time I start to record and I usually do pictures first, so I'm not all extra sweaty with everything. 
So I usually do between like 50 and 70 pictures. And then, you know, once I kind of did all my normal poses and then maybe some new ones and then maybe uh, new poses with different lighting that I never had before, then I start filming. But this time I was like, you know what? I've been watching this aggressive shit. And I had this idea that I wanted to maybe choke myself a little bit or play, do some breath play. I wanted something that was really aggressive because with some of these clips that I was seeing with these black guys uh, pounding out these white chicks, I, I wanted to feel something from behind me, but I wasn't in the mood to kind of clean myself up to play with a toy, and I didn't feel like doing that kind of cleanup. So I was like, what the fuck could I do? And I... I grabbed a, um, not a posture collar, but a collar for a leash. And the, I, I believe I have two collars, but the inside of this one that I used has this like fake fur on the inside of it. And when you close it, it's super, super snug and comfortable. And it's just the right length so that when you're moving your head around, the sides of it don't bite into underneath your jaw where you have like these little glands that sometimes can stick out. It, it didn't do any of that stuff and it fit fucking perfectly. And I, just putting it around my neck while I was naked and listening there, listening to the porn from the other room, I was like, dude, I think I know what I wanted to do. So I grabbed a leash to match that uh, collar. I go back out there, and I start thrusting into my comforter again that's on the couch while all this porn is playing. And then I I pull the leash from behind me, and I get like this, this sensation. And I haven't done anything breath play since... The early 2000s. That's the last time that I really done any any breath work, any type of strangulation or anything. And I was like, dude, I need to fucking figure out something else. So then I got this idea of... Because th remember, this whole time that I'm thrusting into my comforter, I am not staring at... I, I kind of can't, with the way everything's positioned, stare at my computer and kind of get myself off in this way that I am comfortably or a way that would be you know maximum. So I was like, you know what? Fuck this. So I I decide to manipulate this this uh this comforter that I have on the couch and I manipulate it in a way that it's completely formed and shaped so that I could I could sit on the couch cowgirl style so now I'm facing the front of my living room where the TV is, but now I can see my computer. And you know, I'm I'm watching this video play and I'm like, this is fucking kind of hot. I feel kind of sexy right now. And I put on a few things. I think I put on my stockings and my heels. And I had this collar and leash. And, uh, you know, I'm th I'm thrusting into this while I have this collar on. And I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm putting a little bit of pressure on my throat. But it's hard to when, you know, you don't have, you know, player two. So, you know, somebody can help you out and, like, do the choking for you while you're doing whatever you're doing. But... I'm able to just just from like right behind my neck put like a little bit of pressure while I'm grinding into this fucking uh, this comforter and I might I get now I'm just hard as fuck now I'm like I want to come right now but I remembered I was like what can I fucking use what can I do to have some sort of counterweight so I can lean forward a little bit while while I'm in this fucking um, reverse cowgirl position and like just dig into this fucking comforter i need something to choke me and then i remembered i have uh four uh c clamps and i use these for my uh my shows back when i sold art and all that stuff i used it to uh to hold up my signs that were on the edge of the table it would clamp down on one part of it and then just hold it to the bottom of the table so it wasn't going down so C-clamps are this giant fucking metal clamp that basically comes into two large parts. You have the uh, spindle, the thing that like uh, clamps down, and then that part has the adjustable like jaw that kind of smashes into the other side of the vise. And they're extremely heavy. I uh, I think what a I think mine are five or six inches or something like that. No, they're longer than that. Anyways, they're they're have to be like five pounds a piece. So I was like, fuck. I was like, I only have one section of leash. And I was like, if I had more leash, I could probably hang these things at the end of it and do what I want to do. So I go I go back in the bedroom. I stop what I'm doing without taking my uh, leash and collar off. I find another leash, another extension. I add it onto the first one. I grab my C-clamps. 
And remember, I'm sitting on the couch. And reverse cowgirl position. I attach my C-clamps to the furthest part of the leash. I put them behind the couch. And it creates just enough weight so that when I lean forward, it starts to choke me a little bit. And as I'm watching this compilation, I, I tease myself maybe for three minutes. I couldn't even take it any longer. I'm just slowly digging into this fucking comforter. I'm rock hard. I feel super sexy. And now I feel like I'm being dominated. I feel like I'm getting choked from behind. And then um, I wait because I, I watch the same compilation at this point during this night, like two or three different times. And I wait for like my favorite part to, to come up. And it's just um, it's this white lady. She's getting pounded out what looks like to be in a hotel room. And uh, she starts screaming, I can take it. I can take it. I can take it all now. Oh, my God, I can take it all. And it's so fucking hot. And it's so sexy. And just to just to hear the fact that like this this white lady had to work up to the fact of just taking all this big giant black cock and now it's so it's so intense for her that she's now reached like a whole other level of just arousal. And you you constantly see this with um you know uh these uh these interracial um, videos and whatnot. Hey, I'm going to see if I can play a little bit for you here. I'll uh, not fuck with the sound too much. Fucking ads. Okay. So she's getting pounded from behind here. Oh, wait, no, that's not it. Um, but anyways, it's just verbally what she says that I find to be so arousing that... Um, oh, Yeah, that to me is fucking hot. You got me. You got me. Like, she's almost mentally tapping out. And then when, when you're watching this video, it's so fucking hot and sexy. Uh, because it just looks like she's being overwhelmed and dominated. And I wait. I, and this, this section isn't that long. But as soon as the section came up, I just started I just started fucking this comforter on the couch. Uh, and then leaning for, leaning forward so much so that I'd be choked really good. And then I was basically in like this um, reverse cowgirl kind of doggy style position. And I just fucking sprayed a hard fucking load in, into this comfort. And I just fucking was almost convulsing because it felt so good. I could barely take it as a human being. This, this fucking orgasm was so strong. I seriously thought I was going to have an episode out of like a fucking X-Man movie. And I was going to just learn about my new mutant powers that way. It was crazy. Um, getting choked like that and, uh, and coming into something that was like so like sensitive and soft and to have that visual, the audio, uh, the, the feeling on my dick and my throat and to feel like sexy and to be in this like really, um, submissive position of like this doggy style position at the edge of the couch, because it's, because it is a couch when I was leaned forward in this doggy style position and just, and just. The way I was fucking the comforter was almost like I was getting fucked doggy style, which which made it just as good. But even though I was like super arched, I was hanging over the front of the couch about a, like a foot or so. Maybe, maybe, no, not even a foot and a half, like a, a, about 10 inches probably. That's what she said. And when I was that far forward, I was able to take the the C-clamps because it's roughly 10 pounds of resistance at, resistance at this point from behind the couch and I would like I was lifting them up as I was choking myself, and it was so fucking hot. Uh, so yeah, that's um that's one of my stories. <laughs> um, it was super fucking hot, but I was like, all right, if I need to do this, I really need to do this during the week because uh, I I wasted my whole fucking night getting ready and then not making anything. It was it was super hot though. The next thing that I wanted to talk about this happened this last weekend, so. I have several dildos. I have a double-sided dildo. I have, um, other than my oral dildo that's six inches long that I only use for oral uh, practice, I have um, a small, soft five-inch dildo, a seven-inch dildo, I think an eight or a nine-inch dildo, 
and I I think I have a 10 or 11 inch uh, dildo, all in varying uh, widths or thickness. And uh, I never made a video where I used more than one toy. It was always just a dildo, or it was always a butt plug, or it was always my fingers, something. It was always just one thing. But I uh, I decided I you know I got to make a video with two toys, so I used I started the video off using my one uh and it's a fairly slim dildo and that's why i chose it it's i believe it's seven or eight inches long it's not that long but it's thin so it's easy to take and it doesn't rip your asshole open and it's i, I honestly think it's a great starter but i started the video off with that one and obviously i warmed up in the shower and everything so like if i have any any gook that comes out i can clean it off right then and there and just keep going and going and going until my ass is clean but i started with that one and then I had the other toy uh, lubed up and ready to go. It's much taller. It's much thicker. And you could, if you want to, you know, go to my OnlyFans and just check out the preview of it. Or go to the FetLife or the Pornhub or the X Hamster. You can see uh, the, I have the preview there. There's a very large size difference. And I, uh, I finished the video off with that. And I brought myself almost to orgasm. And then while I was right there, I started fucking just riding this thing. And I, I was leaned back on my couch so I could have full control of everything. But um, it was it was pretty much almost a no-hands orgasm. I did have to kind of take myself to the edge, jerking myself off. But as I came right there, I just let it go, and I just started fucking this dildo so hard. My dick was just flopping all over the place. It was super hard. I just started fucking shooting huge loads of cum. Super fucking hot. Never happened before. I do, however want to make more time during the week to have a proper sissy no hands orgasm um even back in the day when i had like no hands orgasms uh i would have to take myself reasonably close to orgasm without my uh with my hand before i could kind of like let loose with a toy but one of the things that i noticed and i don't know if this necessarily disqualifies it to be uh maybe um, but if you're, if you're riding a toy, whether you're bent over or you're, you're standing up or you're, uh, leaning back, when, it really helps when you have your dick slapping against like your thigh or your stomach because you get sensation that way and you still, it's still kind of like jerking off in that way. Um, I haven't had one where it's just strictly anal, uh, penetration though. I, that's what I would fucking love more than anything else. So that's my next goal. Um. Same stuff has been going on with the uh, with the oral training. I talked about before when I was doing my oral training, I was fucking the pillow at the edge of my bed while I was going down on a toy, while I had something in my ass, and I was uh, watching um, Sissy Hypno stuff, and, and as I came deep into the pillow, I was able to just throat the whole fucking toy like it was nothing, and my whole body was just like fucking spasming out because it was so intense. So... Nothing new on that front. Um, I'm not an expert like I want to be, but I'm still making progress, and I'm fucking loving it. So, um, next thing up, listener emails. This is uh, uh, Two Stories by Marie, real short. Hello again. I want to thank you for your content. Always a pleasure to listen to you. When I lived in New York State, I had a two-bedroom duplex that had a well. The well pipe was located in the front of the yard and was protected by a huge flat boulder. I did this particular risky stunt several times. I dress in a nylon slip. It was a phase I went through with cheap forms, garter belt, stockings, panties, and heels. I'd wait until 2 a.m., one of the safest times, on a weekend after online gaming and walk out my back patio door and into the front yard and lay back on the boulder the risk of someone driving by on the street only 30 feet was intoxicating i had listened carefully ready to drop behind the boulder i would rub myself through my nylon fabrics and usually come in a short time i always i always resented the guilt feelings afterwards but the risk was always enticing no shit i'm getting excited just reading this shit when I lived in California in the early 80s, I found an adult bookstore that had naked women posing in private rooms separated by glass from your seat. 
if you're if you're roughly around our age, so if you were born in the 60s, 70s, 80s, you you're definitely aware of this because you've seen it in movies and stuff like that. But uh, anyways, go, he goes on, or she, excuse me, you paid so much and would, uh, and that would prevent a curtain um, a curtain from dropping down, blocking your view. As I was familiar with the routine, I'd go there dressed in my favorite pantyhose at the time, legs sheer energy. I'd wear a jumpsuit over them and slip on loafers. I'd pay the money and to get up to to get the curtain up and make sure that the door was locked. I'd slip my shoes off, unzip my jumpsuit, and sit on the chair provided and rub myself through the hose while talking to a nubile young lady through a phone that was provided. It was the first time, to my knowledge, that anyone had seen me in pantyhose for that long. While it wasn't risky, it was tremendously exciting, and it wouldn't take me long to spew my load into my pantyhose. Thanks again, Marie. That's fucking hot. You know, it's funny that I'm reading this now, because earlier today, without really any prep for that, all I was watching for the past several hours while I was working on um, what uh, episode... Um, well, the next episode doesn't fuck. Ep- episode forty-eight was all cross-dressers and public, and uh, just uh, like cross-dressers trannies doing out like things by their stairs. Uh, I watched a few different videos today of uh, cross-dressers um, throating themselves with the dildo while blindfolded onto the stairs to their apartment. Um, other other cross dressers at a uh, truck stop just riding a toy on a table and shit like that just crazy stuff today fucking uh great minds uh think alike i think fate maybe um let's see what else is going on oh i uh i was going to make one particular video today uh i have a uh, a newly bought it's um not teal what the hell is that color uh, lavender colored sweater dress and I thought I had a shade of lipstick that matched that but it was more blue than anything so I I canceled on making that and I was going to make a video for a uh, a more black and blue themed video just to kind of change things up I've been spending so much goddamn money but uh, yeah I thought that was kind of a silly thing so anyways that was the intro I don't even know how long I've been fucking talking um so now we have the meat and the potatoes of the episode. So if you if you don't want to stick around, like I said, I totally get it. I'm making this, you know, f- to be educational sometimes, to share feelings, to have people share their stories and feelings. Um, and, you know, I know everybody loves the naughty stuff, and I can tell by the numbers and, you know, based off of the title of the episode – for you know, for my podcast, all the different ones. If if anything's remotely naughty, generally those get the most attention. But I try not to lead people into shit. That's uh, I'm not just I'm not trying to get clicks because I'm not getting paid for any of this stuff. So know that I I'm always gonna try to be upfront with you at the beginning of each episode. So if the whole thing is gonna be spicy and sexy or informative to cross dressers in particular, I'm really gonna let you know up front. And, and if it's gonna be overly technical, like. Uh, the rest of this podcast is going to be i'm going to say hey dip out i'll see you on the next one all right so when i first started to really come to terms with all this stuff it was a few years ago and i seen a counselor that i had seen in the past um just because i was having panic attacks and life stuff that i couldn't deal with too well which was all my fault um, I decided to see her again because she was already aware of me and I thought it'd be a good place to start. And I, I remember before I stopped seeing her the first time she had mentioned that, um, cause we were talking about it, that she wanted to be a sexual, uh, therapist or a psychologist. I can't remember. And, uh, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'll give her another shot. And whenever the thing that I liked about her, her name was Ashley, she, Every, every time I, I would see her, it never felt like treatment. It always felt like I was having a reasonable person to have a conversation with. And it made it super easy because of that. But upon doing so, I seen her several times. I want to say I seen her less than 10 Um 
and I'm trying to... I think I've seen her a couple times in person, and then the rest was all online. Uh, which is fine. It makes everything a lot easier. You don't have to fucking drive. Uh, the travel time. Not that I mind it, because I always have podcasts and music to listen to and whatnot. But the thing that I kind of noticed right away is that she wasn't able to help me too much. And when I asked, eventually it got to the conversation of trying to find different resources and stuff like that. Uh, Everybody she knew, they were booked up and not taking any new clients. And I was like, fuck. But, um, and it was fine. Again, uh, no problems with her in particular. But she just really wasn't um, able to help me with anything. Not so much with... uh, um. Yeah, because even with the uh, the educational part of it of like, well, what is cross dressing, and then why do you do this, and what does that make you, and you know, where does all this stuff stem from? Is it is it only sexual? Is it kind of sexual? Does it have something to do with pronouns? Is it genetics? Is it maybe the way you're built? Fuck, none of that stuff. And and then even when I would come across liter- literature and read about trans stuff and whatever, cross-dressing would just get brushed over. Like, eh, cross dressing's kind of like on the trans spectrum or whatever. But anyways, let's talk about fucking trannies some more. And it was, it started to become really frustrating. So I eventually stopped my therapy with her. And it was costly too, uh, especially before she, before she switched because she got X amount of dollars per session from everybody. So that's why it's good to just be fully booked across the board because if you see somebody for like an hour and then you're making you know uh 50 or 60 dollars take home per hour i mean that's fucking really good money if you can find a clientele base you know what i'm saying so i mean good for her because the place she moved to instead of being like 40 or 50 an hour was like 75 or something like that per session and i was just like i can't warrant that not getting any answers but before it ever even Before I ever said anything to her, I started to get the idea of like, well, what if I just kind of do my own podcast? What if I just talk about the things that interest me in terms of cross-dressing? And then maybe I can, I don't know, make friends, you know, through the podcast with people calling in or sending emails. Or uh, maybe somebody will reach out that has better information you know, like clinical studies about whatever. Maybe there's peer-reviewed papers. Maybe I'll discover more about myself. So I, you know, uh, I started the podcast. That was the reason why I started the podcast. It's just I didn't have a way to figure out exactly what I was. Is it just is it just cross-dressing? Is it more than cross-dressing? And then also, you know, if if like would cross-dressing be satisfying enough? And if not. Am I, am I going to be taking, you know, a fork down the road no matter what? Um, all these things I was able to answer by just sharing my experience from the beginning up until now. And that that was my idea for my podcast was to explore my feelings and learn about myself. Uh, specifically my sexuality. Because um, I, I, I feel like if, you know... you at least with me exploring both of those things with how I felt about existing this way in the world. And then, you know, if I could change myself and knew everybody would be totally cool with it, uh, that would be like, I think the biggest thing for all of us, honestly. But that was my idea about the, the podcast It's like, what's your, what do you want to talk about? If you, and it's not, a, it's not difficult. Although I have a lot of fucking details on all this stuff. You could. You really only need to do a few things, and that's it. But we're gonna start from the fucking very beginning, and I'm just gonna try to help you out as as best as I can. So, you know, if you have some vague idea of what you want to talk about or what you want to do on the podcast, jot it down, make a list. Don't be lazy. Type it or write it on a piece of paper. Don't keep it stored in your head. I, I can't tell you how many fucking people I come across. Not 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 with podcasting, but with everything else in uh, in life. Whether they got like a story idea, or a movie idea, or a script, or a screenplay, or they're gonna create a board game or a card game. Oh, it's all in my head, man. Well, fucking, it's never gonna. It's most likely never going to leave your head if you're that lazy 
with just trying to make something even more a reality. Uh, and I'm sure all of you listening are either take part in that or you definitely sure fucking know somebody that is just full of ideas, but nothing ever comes to fruition. Nothing ever actually becomes reality because all they do is fucking talk and have feelings and have different ideas. Uh, hey, I get I get how exciting and how fun it is to brainstorm and to have thumbnails of things and to, um, what do they call that shit when you're an artist and you're trying to create new things? Um, I can't think of the name right now, but you're doing that shit. <laughs> Uh, it's that's the easiest stuff though. Concept, concept art. I I get how addicting that is to just have a bunch of fucking you know ideas that are basically just the frame of something, without even having a good foundation. Just like oh fuck fucking can you imagine if they did this or they did that? And it's like yeah, most people can. Most people that I've ever met in my entire life have all kinds of ideas about everything or what they would like or whatever. But when it comes to your own personal shit, you suffer from the same ailment of just laziness. Or you're just complacent in life, so you're never going to go outside of your comfort zone of, oh, you know, what if it turns out like shit or if it doesn't work really? Well, that's most things in life. That's actually all things in life. All things in life is just, it's mostly failing by a very large margin. Probably 99% of life can be chalked up to fucking failing before you learn how to do it properly, consistently. Not even perfectly, but just most of the time you're fucking got your shit together. But for me, I would say, if you're brainstorming, just write down who, what, when, where, why, and how. And, you know, think next. What purpose does it serve? Is it going to be a vlog or a diary of some sort? Is it going to be help, tips and tricks, educational, a documentary, an experience of something, uh, expertise that you have? Is it going to be science-based, political, comedy, athletics, a unique point of view? And all those things, you could also incorporate interviews, reactions, uh, statistics, peer-reviewed studies, all that stuff. And that's just that's just all basic shit that I that I nailed off. What do you get excited to talk about? <coughs> there, I need a sip of water. My throat's getting dry as a motherfucker. That's the one thing I love about my tap water. The pipes are always cold no matter what. Um so I would say Jot down, I, even if it's even if it just looks looks like a mess, and you don't have to do one of those brainstorming bubbles on a piece of paper if you don't want to with like my podcast and then have you, you do do whatever works for you. If that works good for you, then do that. If it doesn't, then then figure out something else. My notes are a fucking mess, but I organize everything in a certain way that I, you know, like I'll cross this off. But like, all right, the next thing goes over here. I just I know how my brain works and it works fucking perfect for me. And it really helps when you figure it out. But like I said, if you have an idea, have it exit your brain. You know, go down your nerves through your hand on through a pencil or pen or the fucking keypad and put it onto something other than your brain. So you can start working off of other ideas so you're not just having to constantly, oh, what was that? Or, or you forget about things that you were building on. And then you're then you're stuck on something, and then you have the excuse of like, oh, I forgot, or oh, it was this one thing, but I lost the idea, and I don't remember. Well, then that's your fault for fucking being lazy in the first place. So just don't do that, and that'll really help out anything that you want to do. Not even just with podcasting, but just to get any idea motivated to to turn into a reality. But all right, so let's say you figure out what you want to do. And kind of how you want to go about um, your subject matter and whatnot. The next thing I did after that is like, all right, I'm, uh, you know, I'm going to talk about cross dressing. Is what are you going to call your podcast? I decided to call mine the Synthetic Podcast. Um, in in parentheses, it's uh, a cross dresser's journey, which I'll probably take away at some point. Although you'll notice that I did not include that in my uh, podcast. Um, the icon art, I did not include that in there just because I had a hinkling that at some point in time things were definitely going to change for me. So 
mine was related to my name, and the reason I chose synthetic was synthetic is man-made or fake or not of nature or of, or of natural things combining by themselves. It's something you really have to kind of go out of your way to make. And with me, whether it was the name itself, the wigs that I wear, the false eyelashes that I put on, uh, makeup, the fake tits, the extraordinarily long high heels, the stockings, the garter belts, the corsets, uh, all the toys up my ass. Um, I decided to lean into that, and you know, I like the name synthetic. Most people thought it had was like S I N, as if I'm being sinful, but that that wasn't the case. Um, not that I thought that was like a bad idea, and I did think about that before anybody said anything to me, because like brainstorming, like brainstorming with the podcast when I was brainstorming my name. I wrote down, I think, a hundred different variations of sin and synthetic and and uh, sexy and playful and uh, naughty this and naughty that. All these iterations, just just so I could see them and know how it would look on print, and that's how I figured it out. But um, your name is it going to be relevant to you and what you're going to talk about or what you do? It could even be your personal name. Uh, just like with me, you could use your feminine name if you're going to be talking about cross-dressing. Um, if the potential name of your podcast is common or prevalent to your theme, I recommend looking up all the different websites on social media and so on just to make sure that you're not going to be stealing somebody else's fucking thing going on. And um, if you do find that it's not taken, like with whatever you're going to call it, so when I chose... The synthetic podcast, there was other things called the synthetic, but with one word and not two. And then I found somebody else on Instagram called synthetic, but it was one word and not two. And then even with like Pornhub and OnlyFans, it's synthetic, two words. And that's that's how I went about that. But try to gobble that shit up right away so you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, having radically different um, Twitter or IG handles, everything can kind of be the same. All my stuff is a little bit different because I, you know, I have, I've had, what, I think this is my fourth Instagram account for synthetic because, you know, I post naughty stuff and I get it. Whatever. There's going to be a better alternative one day. But until there is, it's probably going to get deleted again. But anyways, um, so you figure out your name. Then I moved on to the next... The, uh, Jesus Christ, I moved on to the next thing before I even started writing anything down. Uh, it was, how am I going to execute my podcast? How often am I going to be posting? Several times a week, once a week, bi-weekly. You know, I was doing... There's been times where I've done it several times a week, like two or three times a week, and I had so much fun because I was just like... The, the passion and the energy and the free time was there. I was like, fuck it, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. Um... Once a week, that's what I was doing. That was a lot for me, but uh, if you have the free time, do it. If it, if the thing you're talking about, you have enough knowledge off the top of your head and you can riff and you don't have to be so reliant on show notes like I am, then, hey, have at it. You can always just not post as often, and then it'll be totally fine. Uh, the, you know, the next op option, like I mentioned, is bi-weekly. That's what I'm doing now. It makes everything in my life just that much easier to deal with when I was trying to do it every weekend, Monday through Friday, I was just crammed and hunched over my fucking computer, just typing away in the podcast. I stopped playing video games. I barely had time to go to the gym, if at all, just to be able to have this, have my own, like suffer my own time restraints. Um, and I don't want to do that, which is why I'm doing it bi-weekly. And then now every episode is fairly lengthy. And I try to be uh, either very upfront, honest, straightforward, or very entertaining with everything that I talk about, which is, again, another reason why I use the show notes. So that's uh, that's also something that I recommend having is when you're doing all this stuff, when you start uh, talking about topics and, and diff different things, maybe have um, show notes. And I'll actually probably post those maybe on my Instagram or something like that if you want to see kind of how I do my notes. They're... Uh, I use the Apple um, Pages or whatever, which, you know, it's it's whatever. It seems to be reasonably, you know, uh, close to Windows or whatever. But uh, basically, I structure everything on a page with what makes sense with how my brain works and how I like to talk and the pace of everything. Um, but, yeah, it'll probably help you to see that rather than me talk about it. But anyways, let's, let's move on to the next thing. So, um, 
uh, let's see here. So after you figure out how often, you know, you're going to be doing everything. Obviously, like I said, they, they both have their own advantages and disadvantages. And if you have more time to invest in each episode, um, then, then go for it if you, if you have, uh, more time. And then, um, also, you know, when you think about having more time to, to make an individual episode and, you know, it could be as long as like 35 or 45 minutes to, you know, hell, I've had podcasts that were like four and six hours long and it just kept going and going and going. But the reason I like all the space in between the episodes and one of the reasons why I dialed it back on top of just not having the time was the accuracy of everything that I would be talking about would be more precise and the quality of the content that I would put out was much better. And I noticed then there was a several episodes to where I was under the gun. And again, just me. Nobody else is making me do this. I'm just like, fuck, all right. I just got to bang this shit out and it'll be good. Um, that that sucks, but that's kind of being your own enemy. Now, you know, you might have uh, other reasons why you might be doing this, which we'll talk about later. And that has to do with, um, you know, making money on the uh, on your podcast or whatever. But let, let's move on to the next thing. So, um, I'm trying to read down my notes here. Oh, I was going to say, if you, uh, have less time but post more often, you have a better chance to engage with your audience as they, uh, will listen if you entertain them. So if you're, if you're constantly pumping shit out, because there, there was a change that I got from a few different people, somebody, like a few people noticed like, Hey, you haven't posted this week. What's going on? Uh, that's the advantage of posting content frequently and being reliable as a, like a reliable source of entertainment is like whatever your day is like uh, trash Tuesday is a podcast and a, um, a YouTube channel that I watch every Tuesday they drop it. I'm not sure what time I think it's like earlier in the morning around like 10 or 12 or something like that, but that's just their thing every Tuesday. Then the rest of the week, they don't fucking worry about it. And they all have their own uh, two of them have stand up comedy careers and then Kalila. She works with uh, Bobby Lee, her boyfriend, and they have a podcast together. But that's that's all she does. She doesn't have a full time job. I don't even think she goes to the gym. It's just them working on podcasts and fucking you know, uh, making money from doing that. But um, the next thing, the podcast apps for your phone. Now these these apps that I'm going to mention, I'm not going to get into detail with prices on on too much. So don't worry about any of that because we'll fucking be here for five, six hours, if I were to break down numbers for everything. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to tell you uh, all the different things that I've seen on um, searching for the, the different apps in the App Store, and then you can figure out what works best for you. So uh, these recording devices, these the software, is just so you can record and then edit right then and there, and then you can fucking share into your uh, wh- whoever your hosting site is. And that's, that's all it comes down to. So the one I use is, I'm guessing in Japanese, it's uh, Hakusai 2. H-O-K-U-S-A-I 2. Um, I, I bought the, the full pro version, and you know they, they purposely hold back like fairly reasonable tools that you kind of need for whatever you're doing. And they just unlock those. That's basically all it comes down to with all this stuff. But anyways, the next one is Anchor. Um, and again, all these are, all these are apps that you could just have on your smartphone. The next one is podcast studio by Spreaker, S P R E A K E R. Uh, another one broadcaster by Spreaker. I'm not sure the difference between the two. One maybe is for music or something. I don't know. Uh, after that we have podcast maker by audio editor. We have fair right recording studio, F E R R I T E recording studio, Wandery premium podcast app w-o-n-d-e-r dash premium podcast app resonate uh by podcast maker audio master by audio mastering call in social podcasting c-a-l-l-i-n dash social podcasting podcastle and the list just keeps going on and on and obviously you know, um, that might not even include shit for all the different uh, computers and, and franchises for your phones and whatnot. So that was just some of them. Uh, oh, I forgot I made the list for the software for the computer. My bad. 
So the podcast software for the computer is GarageBand, Audacity, podcast editing software, Power Sound Editor, Studio One, Fission, F I S S I O N, Twisted Wave, one word, Adobe Audition, and Wave Lab, one word, 10. Wave Lab 10, the number 10. Um, just like many things nowadays, some things are free, and then other things that are more advanced cost a few more dollars. And like I said, you're basically just paying for them to unlock shit that's that's in the app, and that's just how that works. Uh, obviously, uh, generally speaking, uh, the most expensive stuff has all the bells and whistles. So if you want to be super up there and high tech and and really like learn something, I suggest getting the best of the best and doing whatever you can to to get all the best of everything. If that's what you want to do, but because I like being low end like this, and I'm already spending money without getting any advertisement, I I don't unless I get a windfall of money or I decide to just step things up and maybe do uh, video as well as audio, maybe I'll invest in a bunch of other stuff. But as of right now, I am uh, keeping with kind of like the bare minimum with everything. So, anyways, um, let's go into podcast equipment. Uh, generally speaking, you're going to be just doing everything with either a phone or a computer and most uh, lower end people and then even some popular comedians do it just on their phone and they have like a little mic that they just hand back and forth with the people that they have as guests on their podcast and then some people have a tiny little mic and then other people just move the phone back and forth. Um, but that's like the bare minimum uh, that you need. Other than, you know, electricity and then maybe some sort of, uh, you know, internet access if you plan to post it online at some point. And just like with a phone or computer, generally speaking, the higher the quality, the better the product, potentially. Um, one of the first things, I, I didn't have to get this right away because I already had headphones for gaming and I... I'll get into that reason in a second. But microphones is probably going to be the most common thing if you're going to take podcast a little bit more serious or especially have more than one person. But um, there are uh, omni-directional uh, microphones that um, pick up sound from all directions, whereas directional microphones focus more in one direction. And that can range anywhere from $30 to 400 I got mine for, I think it was under $20 from Amazon. The battery on it kind of sucks. I, I still have have yet to completely kill the battery doing um, a several-hour podcast or whatever with people. But uh, I do recommend if you are going to get uh, microphones or add other things that require electricity, try to figure out the setup and how you need to do it so you don't have to worry about shit dying because if you're if you think you're recording and a piece of your equipment just isn't working and you're unaware and you're talk for hours and hours and hours that fucking sucks i've had a few different issues mostly with my software being interrupted by a fucking phone call or getting a text and now everything has to be in airplane mode so it doesn't fucking stop working i was really pissed that's happened like two separate occasions and I try to do everything to, to make sure that I'm not going to have any dis disruptions with all that stuff. Um, some microphones come with stands. The larger ones, the more expensive ones. Usually those big stands are the like the table, uh, the table mounts. You have to buy those separately. So that's something you're going to have to think about if you kind of want to make your own little podcast studio. With me, almost all the time... I'm sitting I'm sitting on my bed, specifically Indian style, or I have one leg folded and one leg off the side, and I'm talking with my black and orange, uh, orange headphones that I use for gaming, and it just happens to have a mic. Uh, headphones, mine, were about $16. They can, they can cost upwards of $200, depending on the brand and the capability, but basically it's going to come down to this material, the number of speakers... Uh, noise canceling shit and then an attached mic and then obviously if you were just to have the uh, just regular shitty headphones without a mic my headphones would probably cost closer to ten dollars so everything costs everything costs something and that's just how it is um, 
Oh, the reason that I had to get my headphones is because I was playing, what was I playing? Call of Duty one day. And when I was playing it, hang on here, I'm trying to take my glasses off. I got to itch my eyeball. When I was playing it, it was really loud. And I didn't know this, but uh, the way my apartment is set up next to my neighbor, her bedroom wall is my living room wall, which is fucking dumb. But I felt really bad because she came over at like 2.30 in the morning. And she was like, hey, can you keep it down? And I was like, shit, I'm so sorry. And then immediately I just got fucking uh, headphones. And I only played during the day. And then with the volume on, on at 30 when you're playing Call of Duty, you can't hear a fucking thing. So I I game with headphones now. And it's not – I'm not doing that. I'm not saying that out of spite. She's She's really cool and she's really nice. But the thing I did notice is not only can you hear everything with Call of Duty, but with Cyberpunk – you hear all this crazy ambient noise in the background that you didn't even know existed before. So when I play fucking cyberpunk, I'm in a whole day. I'm there, man. All right. So next up, hang on. Let me mark all this stuff off as I talk. Wires. If you're doing what I do, you only have to have a few things. And one wire is for your charging phone. And then you might need a couple different dongles or attachments to, to have one thing convert into another. Other than that, this wire thing that I'm about to talk about is you're probably not even going to have to worry about it. But uh, individually, with all the different kinds of wires, just if you just buy one, not even a set, but just an individual wire, can cost anywhere from twenty to fifty dollars. Now keep in mind they have kits where you can buy multiple mics, wires, and other pieces, and those uh, kits or bundles can go anywhere from one hundred twenty dollars to seven hundred dollars. But unless you plan to have I don't know, three or four people on a podcast, you really don't need to buy these larger bundles. I'd probably say you'd probably be better just buying everything individually so you can kind of pick and choose. Because generally speaking, uh, if you're trying to budget when you buy bundles, everything is almost guaranteed to be bullshit as far as quality goes. But uh, the things you're probably going to have to look into uh, buying is um, XLR cables or microphone cables. Next up is the quarter inch one or one fourth. Or 6.35 millimeter plug, commonly for mixers and preamps. And then you also have your uh, standard headphone earbud mics, ear, earbuds mics, and your headsets. Uh, the headset jack specifically is the 3.5 millimeter plug connection. And then you also have RCA connectors, aka phone cables or AV jacks. And if you like, if you're not being a big shot, just ignore all that shit I just said. Uh, next up, and this one was kind of important to me because I have an iPhone, and whenever you buy anything that isn't a fucking Apple product, you have to buy the iPhone adapter to plug into whatever the fuck, but adapters. So the average price is anywhere between 10 and $30 per wire or dongle. Adapters are basically converting one size or port of a wire to another. And um, like I like I just said... If you have an iPhone or something like that, because they, they change their ports every fucking several years, it's really irritating. You you really need to pay attention to that before you decide, like, oh, I'm going to podcast on this day. Make sure you have all your sizes ready to go. Um, I don't know if I wrote down what their... Uh, oh, yeah, I did. I'll get into that in a second. But um, also, for your adapter, you want to make sure you have a 3.5 millimeter male-female extension. You also uh, might want to look into an audio-CV split cable kit. Uh, moving on, headphone splitter, earphone adapter, audio 3.5 millimeter female to male uh, jack auxiliary cable. And these are just things for like the odds and ends of like I have these headphones and I have this phone or I have this computer and I have these earphones. This is just to try to you know mix and match all your components. So all your tools and your equipment can work properly. Uh, next thing up is HDE 3.5 millimeter male to female, three RCA female stereo cable splitter adapter. This is for like group stuff, and then the iPhone dongle, which is the 3.5 millimeter uh, axle uh, auxiliary audio splitter cable adapter to iPhone Lightning, and that's like the newest uh, one that they have for the phone. Uh, next up, cameras. They start as little as $10 if you're going to find something like a cheapie for the top of your computer. But I don't recommend buying a camera that is that cheap. 
especially if you if you're gonna have something that's going to be online, you want to put it on YouTube, and even I don't think with the Apple stuff, but with um, with the other podcast that uh, Joe Rogan is on, they they have the video stuff on there that you can that you can upload. So if you if you're gonna be visual, I don't recommend skimping any money because it's not fun to watch. And if people don't like what they see, they might just click off of the YouTube channel and watch something that's much more pleasant to look at. And that's not them being an asshole, but it's it sucks when you're watching, you know, some somebody move their hand over here, then a second and a half later it's over there without any uh, information in between. It's just, uh, yeah, looking at grainy jacked up shit that's horribly lit is uh, is is not all that great. But the more reasonable range for stuff that's uh, a little bit more professional is gonna you're you're gonna be looking at, at around one hundred and sixty dollars to sixteen hundred dollars, going from the low mid range to the extreme uh, high range, and anything after that that's like fucking movie production quality, which I would say is not necessary. Um, laptop cameras that are built in are shit, but the camera for the phone is much better. So if you're gonna do that kind of setup where you're gonna be filming from your phone and not just recording. You can get away with that because I make all of my OnlyFans content on my phone. And uh, when you do everything in like 4K, 60 frames per second, it is awesome. But um, outside of the price, the next thing that I'm going to be talking about is resolution. The common resolutions are uh, 360p, which is also uh, 480 by 360, uh, 480p SD, which is 720 by 480. 720p which is HD 1280 by 720 1080p which is full HD which is uh, 1920 by 1080 and then you have ultra HD 4k which is uh, 3840 by 2160 and then you have cinema 4k which is uh, 4096 by 2160 um, now you know, these res- resolutions really help with the quality of the picture that you're looking at. So the lower you go, the less uh, storage it's going to have, and also the shittier it's going to look. So if you don't have any storage or um, energy issues, I highly recommend to go as high as you possibly can. Um, so I-, I film everything in 4K on my phone. It looks totally different. When you uh, when you jump up, uh, even from the 1080, it looks like it's a whole different world. It blew me away because so many of my videos I wasn't using 4K or even the 1080. The 1080, I was using like the the 720. Uh, and then when I finally clicked that button, I was like, dude, this is insane. So it's definitely worth it. The next thing up is the FPS or the frames per second. Um. The common frames per second is uh, 24, 25, 30, 48, 50, and 60. 60 being the optimal. Now, uh, generally with all the stuff that I listed, with, with all your equipment, you have to pay attention to how everything's working in concert because if you don't have everything synced up properly you know whether that's your audio frames per second and your bit rate and all that other bullshit uh it's going to come out choppy so you, you need to make sure that you're working within your bounds with all your equipment so all your equipment can handle it because if you're trying to do uh you know maximum audio or video that might not work for the other one if you're using a lesser tool for that particular task so keep that in mind you know, look up some uh, YouTube videos on how to or different setups you can possibly have, because all that stuff is going to affect. Oh, I almost kicked over my glass of water. Um, it's all going to affect your resolution, your frames per second, your storage space, your battery life, uploading or streaming the amount of content at a higher quality, and so on and so forth. So, um, before you actually try to do anything official, practice on all your shit. Make sure you know how it works, how it turns on and off, uh, any uh, issues that it might have, and the capability of everything. Next up, lighting. Uh, this You can go balls to the walls with this. Again, this is mostly, actually, this is really only specifically if you're going to have a podcast that you're going to have uh, 
video for or if you're going to be doing some type of YouTube channel. But uh, costs can range anywhere from $60 to $400. That can include anything to special light bulbs or um, uh, like rope lighting like I have. All these kinds of uh, crazy setups. It, it could be a lot of different stuff. But figuring out what you want to do and how far you want to go is really going to determine your budget. And, you know, with, I've seen some stuff for like the, uh, what are they called? The light rings that are like $15 and all you need is like a battery or a plug and then that's it. And obviously with stuff like that though, if you're, if you're going bare minimum, it's limited colors, uh, limited intensity and then the other capabilities it might have like strobing uh, effects and flashing and, uh, and the ambient stuff. So you need to also pay attention to that with lighting because generally speaking, generally speaking, the more you spend, uh, the more it's going to do or the longer it's going to last. Generally. Um, now, if we're talking like big wig intense stuff here, track lighting uh, has uh, some other capabilities. So like if you're going to be hanging lights from above your, like your little studio area, you can, you can kind of move the lights on a rail uh, left to right or whatever, or up and down, however it's posi positioned uh, in your bedroom. And those can, obviously you can change up the light bulbs in those, and they can pivot. So you can have them point in this direction, and then have one point at the wall, and then have the next one point at you or your guest or whatever. Um, those can get very, very costly because they have a mount and then you have different lamps and then you also have to get the different, uh, bulbs for all that stuff. And if you, if you're getting track lighting that isn't going to get wired or, uh, isn't going to get plugged into your wall, you're gonna have to fucking figure out how to wire it into, to the ceiling. So, uh, pay attention to that stuff because it's easier said than done depending on what your capabilities are. Let me get my, my pen here. Um. LED, uh, RBG studio panel lights, those, those are those big things that you might see on like movie sets. They don't have to be that big. There's obviously different sizes and stuff if you go by inches or millimeters. Uh, they, they're they really nice accent pieces to have on the back, even, if, it, they're, even they're, if they're just making some bullshit lighting on a wall or a fixture or some sort of like little statue or a flag or a poster or something like that. I think they look pretty cool. If I was ever going to do anything professional, I think it'd be nice to have something like that. And with um, sometimes with those uh, those strobe lights or those uh, panel lights, you see those sometimes in the back uh, in the background of somebody's uh, stand up routine. Like if they're doing a stand up on Netflix or HBO or something like that, you just see some old ass looking light fixture just putting off orange or yellow light into the into the ether. Um. There's also a lantern softbox you can get for more ambient lighting that can really control the lower end of the intensity. So if you don't want bright stuff and you want more of a of a uh, ambient somber or smoldering look to whatever you're doing visually, that's another way to go. Matchstick lights, or a, a, where it's kind of a bar strip, it has a single or various lights, and they're very directional with what they do. So you need to, uh, you can have those on the floor, you can have those mounted on a wall or even in the ceiling. They're, they're not like the track LED lights where they pivot and move around. It's, it's one light encased in a small, uh, like box or rectangular shaped, uh, contraption. And they just put out light in one particular direction. And, and again, depending on the brand and, and what you're going for. You, they might have different uh, color settings as well as strobing effects and, and whatnot. Um, filters is something you could do for the lamps as well as light bulbs or cameras even. And that can completely just change the color that comes out of there 100% without any issue. Or you can combine colors. So like if you have uh, a strong blue light and you put a red filter over it, it's going to make a purple kind of a color. That's just... Uh, you got all kinds of crazy stuff that you can do. Uh, tripods, that's just like with your uh, your camera equipment. That that could be something else that you might want to incorporate with your lighting because they make stands for damn near everything. 
uh, the spotlighting fixture. Um, some are sound activated, some are not, but basically the lights are going to move. And um, you, I know they they do make them to where you can program them. Those are generally the more advanced ones. But uh, with the spotlighting fixtures, uh, they usually have automatic switches, so they just kind of throw lights back and forth, or they spin and turn. Uh, it, those can be very fun, very silly. But I just wanted to throw a bunch of different options out at you. So if you wanted to uh, spice things up, you at least have something to think about. Um, next up here, we have the podcast icon image uh, and or art, however you want to word that. So when you're creating an account for your podcast hosting sites, your icon art is required. Uh, they must have certain specs, uh, such as clarity, um, and they, they have to be appropriate in regards of sexuality and size requirements. Size is generally uh, 1,400 or, or 3,000 pixels squared or 72 DPI or dots per inch. The aspect ratio is generally 1 to 1 or 1,400 by 1,400 pixels. And the uh, sites or apps that you can go to and use is Canva, C-A-N-V-A, uh, Pixelide, P uh, or, yeah, Pixelide, P I X E L I E D, Be Funky, one word, Adobe Spark, Stencil, Pick Monkey, one word, P I C, Snappa, S N A P P A, Photo Jet, one word, F O T O J E T, Fotor, F O T O R, Pablo, P A B L O, Easel, E A S I L, and then the last one is Relay That, one word, R-E-L-A-Y, capital T-H-A-T. Next up, after you have all that figured out, it's real easy to do. And when you go to all these sites, they're like, hey, you know, you haven't filled this out yet. And some even give you like little things to do, like, hey, you have to do this next, do this next, do this next. And then it's like, congratulations, you've completed all this other bullshit. Now all you need to do is record and fucking whatever, blah, blah, blah. So... It's, it's easier said than done. You put a picture in there, and then you, they're like, oh, how do you want to uh, do your spec ratio? And you just go to podcast. It turns it into a square, and then sometimes it's straight ed edges. Sometimes it's rounded off edges, and then you can just do whatever. But anyways, moving on. Um, are we almost done here? i got a page and a half left. Sweet. Podcast hosting sites. Now, a podcast hosting site is a place where you go where you initially post your content that you were given, and then you're given an RSS feed. An RSS feed, really simple syndication, is a feed online that contains uh, details about every piece of the content on the site that, that's been published. So each time a site publishes a new piece of content, details about that content, including a full text or the content or a summary, a publication date, author link, etc. Uh, but basically, it's it's how people are going to be able to find you, whether that's individual people um, through a, a search tool or even other uh, sites that are receivers of podcast and host sites. But uh, the things to consider when trying to find a podcast hosting site, uh, pros, cons, prices... So, um, you know, look for extra editing features if you're going to be spending the money and if you want to be, if you want to look for like the, the best qualities to look for. So they usually come with uh, some sort of a, a sound quality option that uh, isn't necessary to buy, but uh, uh, it basically makes things a little bit more appropriate when you use it. Some also come with an editing board, so like if you just take the recording, you can start fucking with it on the site if you have an actual physical website to go to, and then just drop it in there and then start man manipulating the sound bite. Um, and also pay attention to the cons. Like if it's too expensive, you have a steep le learning curve, or it has extremely limited functionality. Uh, prices. Some are really cheap. Some are expensive. Now, obviously, with the more premium stuff, or sometimes some of these places might not even have any tiers at all, and it's just like, hey, you want the whole thing, you just get it. But um, generally speaking, with all the stuff, you're basically paying for the name, 
and then outside of that, it's different like little gadgets that they have to offer. So different uh, things that you can unlock with the more that you pay. So don't think that there's any magic involved with any of this stuff. Because there's not. I've been doing it for quite some time and I'm a fucking idiot. So uh, I, I stumble through this stuff all the time. Whether I have mistakes or whether I want to try a new piece of equipment or even try to jump ship and maybe use a different recording app or something like that. It's... Uh, it's all it's all fairly simple, um, and also when you're looking at uh, at prices, look at how often it allows you to post with everything. Um, with uh, I'm gonna only talk about my one experience that I have, which is with Buzzsprout, but they have several different payment tiers, and with each tier, it allows you more hours per month to download so with buzzsprout we have the free option which is two hours each month and it's hosted for 90 days and then after that you you're given the option to sign up for real or they delete that shit uh the first payable option is 12 dollars a month and you can upload three hours each month so if you're not doing shit it's the best place to start next up and this is more of the middle of the road 18 dollars per month you can upload six hours uh each month and, um, you know, if you're frequent, you're going to fill that up real quick. But now the last option they have is $24 a month and you can upload 12 hours, uh, 12 hours per month. And if you're, if you're being busy and your shit's epic, like Joe Rogan, you can do that. No problem. I've had what, uh, not, I don't think the last episode, but the three episodes before that one was like four hours. The one before that was like six hours. The one before that was like four hours. Um, so depending on how busy you are and how serious you take it or how in depth you want to deal with things or talk about whatever, uh, I don't think six hours a month is going to be a lot, but if you're nervous about it, just start off with three, three hours a month and you could upload or you can upgrade at any time. And they also, um, have a thing called magic mastering which adjusts your audio quality uh, based on speaking and like music sounds or whatnot. So uh, I haven't not had it, so I don't really know how much, like what that does without it. I kind of don't give a fuck, so I just add it on there automatically. And it's funny, whenever I look at Magic Mastering, I always think Magic Mic, because, you know, like recording or whatever, but that's definitely not what it's called, <laughs> Magic Mastering. Um it's additional fee, but it's not mandatory. So the other podcast hosting sites, and this is where you go to drop off your information so it gets sent out to all the other different um, podcast apps. So you have Podbean, one word, Blueberry, B-L-U-B-R-R-Y, Transistor, Smart Podcast Player, Libsyn, L-I-B-S-Y-N. Uh, SoundCloud, which is one word. Captivate. I'm sure you can hear me shuffling my notes around. Uh, Castos. C-A-S-T-O-S. Resonate. Simplecast, one word. Spreaker. S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R. Audio Boom, one word. Fusebox, one word. Podomatic, one word. Uh, sound. Oh, I already did SoundCloud, and then RSS.com. But uh, like I said, I only talked about my one experience because I I was able to pay for all this stuff for all this time, and it's extremely simple. All right, next up, podcast directories. Now, after you set up all your stuff this far, you have one more step. Submit your info into these directories, so every time you upload uh, an episode, it's automatically posted on the places you normally look for podcasts, like fucking iTunes and uh, Spotify and all that shit. Um, so keep in mind when you set up... Uh, I'm sorry. Keep in mind when you set up info at certain, directi certain directories, you have certain networks set up. So when you upload your whole network, uh, you have some like these like little uh sub sub networks so for example like the apple podcast has overcast castro Castbox, and pod uh, pod friend 
all underneath it. So whenever you upload your information to the Apple Podcast, all these other places that you would look to listen to podcasts also have it. So that's like fucking what, five and one? One, two, three, four, yeah, five and one. But there's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Amazon Music, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Pandora, uh, TuneIn plus Alexa, Podcast Addict, Podchaser, one word, Pocket Casts, two words, Deezer, D E E Z E R, Listen Notes, two words, Player FM, and Podcast Index. Now, for example, when I'm at um, Buzzsprout, the place I go, as you're creating your account and then you go to Podcast Directories, you have to click on the link for Apple Podcasts and Spotify and all these things I just mentioned. And then you set up your your name, what your thing is called, and all your other information that they require from you. They all have different requirements. And then through them, you get your individual uh, information on your podcast, like who listened for how long and when did they stop and all this other shit. And and with your uh, other information like you might have for sponsors and whatnot. And then when you when you do that, if you set it up for everybody and they accept it, whenever you post, like whenever I post anything, I see it almost automatically on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and Google and Amazon Music and all these other places. Instantly. Because that's what they are. They're a directory. And then you as the consumer, wherever you listen to these, you get to choose whatever your favorite thing is and you go hear me there. So that's all that there is to it. Now, this next thing, if you want to, it's up to you. And it's the last thing I have to talk about. And I have no experience with it. But um, it's it's really going to round out the rest of the episode. And then you made it to the end. I have no fucking idea how long this episode is. It had to be like, what, four hours? Anyways, uh, monetization. So ad reads is the main way that podcasts generate income. Some podcast hosts make it extremely easy and then others not so much. My experience with Buzzsprout gives multiple options of execution. A uh, few different things. Uh, if you, this is the option. It's called your own sponsors. If you already, if you're, you can add in an agreement you already made outside of the system of um, finding sponsors using their website or other people. Like if you just did it on your own, like you just called somebody and like, hey, you know, will you, will you sponsor me? There's, there's just ways you put out information on there, and then you, it just uh, figured out. A uh, podcorn is um, well if you find if you find it specifically outside of podcorn or the marketplace, which is something that they refer to on there. It's uh, that's so that's the way you can go about that. Um, it's a separate site that you search outside of the companies that you um, that you have like ads listed for and whatnot, and you basically pick and choose. And if you uh, meet their requirements and you like the details, you can send a proposal and then you can move on to the ad sponsorship forward. So I don't know if like it's a sister company or whatever, but when you're when you go to the monetization part for the sponsors and you click on Podcorn, it takes you to another site, and then you have to set up separate information with a separate login and all this other bullshit. Um. But that's it's kind of like the healthcare marketplace when you go on there. Like it's like this is the company, this is the type of ad, this is what it talks about, and when you click on that link, it brings up all this other information. It, it uh, takes you into a little uh, different part of the website, and it's like, all right, this is the name of the company, this is what we do, this is what the ad says. If you want the audio thing, this is what it's going to read as. And then they'll tell you what the placement is. Like if they want a pre-roll, a mid-roll, or a post-roll. And um, depending on the, like the brand and the company, they'll say what they want and what they don't want. And then, you know, and then other stuff. Some of them get really specific with it and other people don't give a shit. And then also, you kind of have to plot out when you're going to be doing the ad read. So it'll be on a calendar and you'll be like, alright, I want to have this many... Uh, this many proposals on these dates and then that'll be enough information for the uh the person that that has the ad to whether they you know that that's going to give them additional information on whether they want to okay it or not 
Um, and the, uh, the other option is the affiliate marketplace. There's only a few things that they have on there, but uh, they say a specific way to earn income involving companies that take part to meet a strict criteria of quality and uh, Buzzsprout doesn't take a fee for the introduction. Uh, the other thing that they have is Patreon. And basically all it is, if you set up your Patreon, like a little button on there, it's just a simple way to donate. That's all that it is. So I think it's just like a quick link. And basically, like one of the things that they refer to is like, hey, buy me a cup of coffee or something like that. So a few dollars, I'm guessing, two or three dollars. I don't know. I don't buy coffee. I buy energy drinks. Coffee's for assholes. I'm kidding, people. Um, all right, now going, and this, this is the last three things I'm going to talk about, then we're done. I'm sorry if I mumbled through some of it. I'm fucking really tired, but I, uh, had to get this bad boy out. So, um, you're, you have th- roughly three different ways of doing a, uh, an ad read. You have a baked in, which is referred to as being baked in. It's a live read or pre-produced, uh, ad and then it becomes an inseparable part of the episode. So basically, the ad will always be within the episode. So even years later, when you go back to like an old episode of uh, Joe Rogan, and they're doing an, a, a during-the-episode live ad read, you can you could skip for it if your app that you're using allows you, to, allows you to do that. But it was a part of the original recording, and it's just always going to be there. And then that's that. The next is Dynamic. And it's pre-produced, and it can be inserted at any time. The audience will hear different ads based on uh, where they listen and when and to what particular episode. Uh, And then you have the ad positions. And this is pre-roll, mid-roll, and post-roll. And I talked about that before, but uh, the pre-roll, these ads usually occur at the beginning of an episode, and they're usually 15 to 30 seconds long. Mid-rolls are just that in the middle of the episode and they are often uh, discussed with the hosts and they talk more in depth about the product and their uh, experience with it and it's usually praise of the product like oh hey I fucking I use Manscaped all the time to shave my balls and whatever blah 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 but and sometimes depending on who you are like Bill Burr or um, uh, maybe like Tom Segura or something like that or something like that they get really funny and creative with it so it's a way to be entertaining and uh, just have fun with the product and make money at the same time. And then you have post roll, small ads similar to the pre-roll ads in terms of length, that and that being 15 to 30 seconds post-episode. So that is it, and I am not going to get in any other detail in terms of uh, podcasting at this point in time. Maybe... A long time down the road, I will do a different version of this, but I think I felt like this is more than enough to kind of get you started with everything. So I hope that wasn't uh, me blabbering too much. If you stuck around, I hope that was somewhat helpful. And again, if you actually have thoughts of creating your own podcast, just fucking do it. The worst thing that's going to happen is is somebody's going to leave you fucking negative comments or say something fucking dumb. And you get that. Like I post, uh, I I post content on TikTok, and Twitter, and Instagram, and YouTube, and X Hamster, and Fet Life, and occasionally you get people that just say stupid shit. I mean, me, I usually get stupid shit because I, I don't give certain people attention, and then they get really upset with me or whatever. And that's that. That's that's just my own particular thing. But don't worry about criticism. If you you know one of the things I like about some of the people that I follow on YouTube and uh, Instagram is they share some of the really heinous messages they get in their story or their actual just their main Instagram or uh, YouTube feed. And you're just like, God damn, how often do you get these? It's like every day you show me at least one. But that's just people fucking suck, man. And don't let that stop you. Um, I've been pretty lucky in terms of... uh, you know, the people that reach out to me with uh, with everything. And I always ask whether it's my OnlyFans content, you know, my naughty stuff of me jerking off and doing all that, or even my um, my podcast stuff. Like, hey, what did you like? What did you not like? What can I improve on? What would you like to see more of? Those are usually the things that I say and I the things that I ask. And it's helped me thus far. And uh, I'm I'm all about it. So 
if you have dreams of this stuff, if you're feeling motivated or you you have all these um I don't want to say whimsical, but if you like whenever I feel super creative, I get like butterflies in my stomach. And if I'm super if I feel like super creative or excited about a project, I I feel it's a feeling to where I almost I feel like I almost want to shit my pants. My stomach gets so nervous with excitement and just joy. I don't know if that's the only uh, me thing or if there's other people that are kind of built like that, but that's like a good sign that I'm fucking like loving what I'm doing. And that's that's how it is with my content. That's how it is with my podcasts. And I highly recommend uh, all these steps and the way that I laid them out. It's as simple as that. So whether you have a phone or a computer, a, a way to record something, some software to do that, uh, you know, choose your name, what you're going to talk about, how often you're going to talk about it, and then you know, choose your um, podcast hosting site, and then do all of your stuff for your um, directories, and then if you want to make money, try to monetize that shit. So, anyways, folks, best of luck to you on your journeys. If you want to reach out to me, originalsin1369 at gmail.com. That is uh, originalsyn1369 at gmail.com. I will talk to you later, sissies. Nighty night.